Hello, 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 ho, oh, hello. Welcome to Dave TV. How are you? It's the 18th of February. <laughs> it's the 18th of May. The 18th of May, 2013, a Saturday. Here's what I was watching last night, side by side. I recommend this highly. A um, friend of this lent me this. It's a really good little documentary here. Um, Keanu Reeves is actually the host of it. And they look at, uh, they compare um, film with digital. You know, for years, you know, for the whole history of the film business, film has been the thing. Now everybody's switching over to digital because digital is getting to look pretty damn good with real high def formats and all that. And uh, it gets into all the technical reasons why and all the different um, aesthetic reasons and, and all this other stuff. Really, really fast, fascinating. If you're a, a movie fan like I am, this is must viewing side by side there. Um, I don't know if it's on Netflix or um, Redbox. I don't doubt it's on Redbox. Usually crappy stuff's on Redbox, but uh, I recommend this a lot. It's good. Good, good, good. Just came out. <laughs> All right, folks. How y'all doing? Big news today. Uh, Andy Parks apparently is uh, no longer going to be heard in afternoons on WTNT. Andy, as you may well know for years, he's a, he's a longtime radio veteran here in the Washington market was heard for years on WMAL, um, did the did the afternoon show, did the morning show there, did the morning show there, mainly, you know, he was with a lot of different hosts over the time, uh, well, gosh, what was it they had, when they had um, Bill Press worked there years ago, and he, he worked, he's been he, part of the morning show team at WMAL for, you know, decade plus, at least, and then late, most, most recently with Fred Grandy, Fred, which we just reported, you know, but he's the love boat guy who used to be a congressman, and now he's doing, um, he's doing a musical or something up there in a New Jersey dinner theater, so that's his career. But anyhow, uh, Fred Grandy and Andy Parks for many years were the morning duo there on WMAL, and then they kind of all fell apart there a couple years ago, and now they got the new Three Stooges on WMAL. The, th the new Three Stooges on WMAL, Brian Wilson, um, Larry O'Connor, and Chris Plant. <laughs> I think that's what they should call them. Yeah. The WMAL Morning Three Stooges. Uh, you know, I'll tell you something. Well, anyhow, let, I'll, let me jump around to Andy Parks first. Andy's, Andy, Andy apparently, had for about 18 months, has been doing a show for the Washington Times. And I think the Washington Times probably had plans of syndicating this nationally, and it just never happened. But they were pro apparently paying for time on WTNT. Remember, they used to have that morning show, too. They used to have them. In fact, originally, I think the Washington Times' grand uh, plan was to have a, you know, a morning show and an afternoon show, maybe a whole radio network of conservative stuff that they would uh, you know, have spread all over the country. You know, and It just didn't materialize. The morning show kind of went away. It's still there, I guess. Kind of, it, it's not being it's being done by another syndicator with the Washington Times participation, but it isn't really the Washington Times morning show anymore. But this show, the afternoon show, was done at the Washington Times building, so I think they still had control over it. But anyhow, um, that's apparently going away. Andy said, as of yesterday's show, Friday's show, his last there, that they're going to still do, try to do something with him in a broadcasting vain sometime, but no specifics. So then you look at the WTNT schedule, and it looks like um, something called the Tea Party. The Tea Party News Network <laughs> is starting up on Monday, so we'll see what that's about. I don't know. You know, Andy, I like, I do, I like Andy. I do like Andy. Andy's a cool guy, but, you know, some of that when he was on WMAL, you know, I mean, some of the stuff he said kind of went over the top. You know, it was kind of like, you know, we should, yeah, I remember him saying stuff like, we should ship illegal aliens back to Mexico or wherever they came from in rail cars, like, like cargo. I don't know, man. You know, it's stuff like that. It's, I know, realize he's saying it because it's feeding the red meat audience out there. But, you know, you're talking about people. 
whether they're here illegal, whether they're illegal immigrants, whether they're not. Whether they, you know, most of those people that come up from Mexico and Central America and whatever, you know, they're hard workers and they're just scraping to survive. And whether you agree or disagree with their immigration status and all that other stuff and whatever, you know, they, they're, they're people. And you don't talk about people like that. But anyhow, WMAL, you know, I just, I listened to that Larry and Brian morning show. And, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a lefty, okay? And I remember writing Republicans. I remember George Bush, both George Bushes. And I remember Ron Reagan and all that. And I disagreed with them on many issues, but I didn't disdain them. You know, it wasn't a constant hate every single thing they do kind of thing. I didn't like Ronald Reagan's policies. I admire Ronald Reagan the man, and even both George Bushes. I mean, they're human beings. They, they worked hard. I think they were decent people. I didn't agree with most of what they did, but there wasn't this blind rage and hatred about the human being. And that's what I hear on WMAL. When I listen to WMAL with Obama, you granted, they don't like his policies. They disagree with almost everything he stands for. But there's a certain sense of human rage against this man. They, they just hate every breath he takes kind of thing. And there's something pathological about that kind of talk. And it makes Larry and Brian and Chris look really hyperpartisan stupid. I don't know. I, maybe they get off the air every day and think, ah, oh, everybody loves us. You know, they, you look like fools when you do that kind of stuff. You know, he is, Obama is president, whether you like him or not. And he deserves a modicum of respect for that, simply as a human being trying to do his job and as an official of the country. And I'll tell you, you know, when Reagan was president or Bushes were president or whatever, I mean, I never, I ne would never have thought of, you know, the kind of hyper-partisan foolish crap that I hear on WMAL in mornings. To Brian Wilson, sh especially, I, Breitbart, you know, Larry O'Connor's from Breitbart, you know, what the hell? They're, they're a bunch of yahoos anyhow. Maybe he's just too much of a dipshit to, to realize it. But, but Brian Wilson, who's been in the news business for many years and who's been at the White House and who's covered the presidents and who's been on Fox News, and I would have thought he would at least have a little more of a little bit of respect for at least the office. You know, that doesn't mean you have to agree with the president or his policies, but there's a certain sense of respect and this kind of criticize and slam every single breath Obama takes. I don't know, man. It just, I sit there and I listen to it and I go, is this what Brian Wilson really wants his legacy to be as this cheap shit, you know, <laughs> radio personality on this crappy little station? Is, is he being paid for this and this is what he wants? I hope not. I hope he comes to his senses soon. <laughs> I really do. You know, it's fine to criticize Obama. I, I have no problem with that. Slam the policies. And I, I, I fully admit that Obama's made some stupid mistakes. I think this, you know, the Benghazi thing was a total cock up and the IRS stuff is a mess too. There, there's, that's no, I will not argue with you. But to, to claim this guy's, you know, just this, this, this ins almost psychopathic dislike for this man is just, it's, it's not American. You know, in America, we, we disagree with our politicians, but we don't hate them, even if we're, we're you know, different political parties. That's something wrong with that. And WMAL really needs to sit down and take a look at where they're going with some of their talk, because it's really obnoxiously bad. Ah! So there. And WMAL's, you know, you look at the history of the station, it's a heritage station. And even for WMAL, they ought to, you should sit down and say, you know, this is a great station with a great history. Let's not trash it by being so foolish and immature. Ah! So then I look at uh, some of the media stuff this week. And I just have to wonder, Fishbowl DC, it's one of my favorite sites. I love them. They're just so wonderful. They've got, you know, three people. Now they've got an intern, fourth people over there, four people over there to do these, like, meaningless, mindless little posts all day of just silly little trivia with kind of with a sn with snark behind it. I mean, here's, here's somebody, 
Okay, Eddie, who I like, usually like Eddie's stuff. He's usually a hell of a lot better than Betsy. He writes this thing, Freelancer accuses USA Today of over-editing abortion story before backtracking. It's about a, a woman who wrote a story, some Irish woman who wrote a story for USA Today about Ireland's abortion laws, and then apparently USA Today editors edit it, and she doesn't like the edit, and now she takes it and screams and yells at Fishbowl DC about how she's being repressed or something like that, and then she shuts up when she talks to the editor. I don't know. You know, it's, you know, if you're a freelancer, and I do a lot of freelancing, I mean, it happens all the time. You turn in your story and it gets edited, sometimes beyond your own comprehension. And you just kind of have to say, you, you know, okay, if it's really egregious, you call up and you say, hey, I really think you, you know, changed my paragraph too much. And it's the problem. What I said wasn't there. But most of the time, you just have to take it. You get your paycheck, you turn in your work, and if they want to mangle it up, then they mangle it up. That's kind of par for the course for freelancing. And to make that even a story on Fishbowl DC just shows you how low they <laughs> how low they have to go. There's like nothing, nobody's reading nothing on this site. And to have four people now doing it, it's just amazing. And the funny, another funny one was... Uh, Oh, the, the, the great Paul Fari, once again, not crediting where he gets his information, doing a story on the Politico. You know, the Washington Post hates the Politico, so they, they have Paul Fari <coughs> sit there and write an article about how they, you know, some Politico promo thing is violating some sort of federal rule. I don't know who gives a rat's ass about it. But apparently the article was broken by roll call and Fari. Fari does one of, one of the things Fari does sometimes, and he's done that with me, is he'll put way down at the very end of the story, and a little cool thing like, oh, by the way, um, you know, DCRTV reported some aspects of this. Um, and we'll just say something like that. So he can kind of really minimize the fact that he didn't break the story that somebody else did, but it'll stick it way down at the bottom. And apparently good old C-plus reporter Paul Furry did that again with a, with a roll call thing. And then the other thing that, okay, crazy Betsy, Betsy, Betsy Wetsy Wastein there gets into is um, Washington Post Eric Wemple also writes about this Politico McConnell, you know, McConnell's promotional thing for Politico debacle. And why, because why should two, well, shouldn't two media reporters from the same publication delve into the same story? You know, I really do think that Eric Wemple's a better reporter and a better writer than Paul Furry. And it kind of, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Why do they have two people doing the job of one? Eric Wemple certainly could be penning the pieces for the blog, for his political, for his political media blog and for the, and for the print edition. Um, why do they have Paul Furry even there? You know, I, I'll tell you, I don't know. Eric Wemple's a considerably better writer. And at least he's not afraid to credit things where he, where he gets credit. Fari has a thing about that, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I think Eric Wemple, I would say he's an A-minus reporter. Paul Fari is a C-plus reporter. So um, <clears throat> who, would you, who, would you, who would you give the buy? Who would you encourage to take a buyout? <laughs> I don't know. All right, folks, I'm hitting the 13-minute mark. It's way too long. Thanks for watching Dave TV on May 18th, 2013. Got to go see the Star Trek movie. I think I'll go see it today. It's kind of looking like a rainy day, so I may do that. <sighs> Book them, Dano.